I think it's important to have a bike um, that you love in more ways than one. One of those ways being the way that it looks. There's a, somewhat of a meme out there that basically says, if you're not taking pictures of your bike every time you take it out, you got the wrong bike. Welcome back everybody. This is part two of a three part video series on this brand new Commenso Meta V5. And this is the T-type build. According to Commenso, the Meta V5, it's a bike that it's easy to handle, balanced, technically sound, lively, playful, and pedal efficient thanks to the all new virtual contact system kinematics. In my opinion, they are not lying. It's uh, just over 6 a.m. on a Monday morning. And this is my neighborhood right here. I have owned two Ritmo V2s, and obviously those bikes come with the DW linkage, and they are well-renowned, I guess, for um, being excellent climbers. Well, I don't think it's an exaggeration on my part to say that the Meta V5 with the new virtual contact system um, pedals just as efficient as a Ritmo V2. I can also tell you that I've not once had to reach down uh, for the lockout. I can get off the saddles and just start cranking out a few um, when the climbs get punchy and it continues to track. It doesn't sink into its travel. It's just very supportive, very efficient. Um, and if you can believe it, it makes climbing um, bearable, if not actually kind of fun. I have owned about five or six Commenso Metas over the last seven years, probably. On this particular V5 now, one thing that I have noticed is that it is like dead spot right in the middle. So when Comenso uses the word balanced, um, I at least what comes to mind after riding this bike is that it's no longer excessively long and excessively um, slack. It is now perfectly in the middle um, where it is lively. Um, I feel like I am in the bike and not on top of the bike. And as I started just taking like quick little jumps and doing some hops here and there while riding down the trail, um, it quickly became noticeable to me that it does like to play. And when it starts to get a little rough and a little fast, it, it does really well. Um, it's easy to handle. It's not all business, right? And it's, it's, it's a perfect, and I keep saying that perfect, but I, I just did find it after having owned, you know, those different iterations, I guess, of this bike. I do feel like Commenso has arrived at a perfectly well balanced, easy to handle um, bike which is the Meta V5. It's got trail bike-like characteristics um, in that it's fun to zigzag through the turns and that it's fun to just hop over things um, and take some jumps. Um, but it's, you know, it can also get down to business um, when it needs to. Anything and everything that I can throw at this bike, it's able to handle. 
uh, regardless of how steep it is, um, whether on the climbs or on the descents, it's 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 solid. It's a solid bike. I'm five foot nine, and this is a size medium, and it fits me perfectly. Um, if you've not watched my other video, my first one where I did a bike check, you can watch that. I'll link it at the end of this video, just so that you can see. Um, the straight out of the box amazing build um, that this one is and this is again the t-type um, and it retails for sixty two hundred dollars which may seem and it is um, a lot of money but when you start going component by component um, you quickly realize that you are getting um, what you're paying for this is definitely the right bike when it comes to aesthetics when it comes to that love at first sight um, it's got a very very um, clean design uh, in terms of the frame it's got some straight lines but then that top tube just have that has that perfect um, arch to it um, which you know complements the rear triangle um, the welds um, are very clean and then the paint job I have owned some bikes <clears throat> transition um, where the paint just starts to chip really easily um, and this is an incredibly well uh, painted frame um, it's just beautiful to look at now the bike in in this particular build um, it, it's it's not perfect um, nothing is uh, and there are three things specifically that I like to highlight in terms of opportunities. Um, the first one being, can you run a full-size water bottle on this frame? Um, this here is a cageless water bottle that I've had for some time. As you can see, um, is there's just no way. It hits the piggyback here, um, and so I, I can't run this particular water bottle. And I don't know that you can actually run a full-size bot water bottle um, just with this current uh, default configuration here with the bolts here. However, I did get my hands on this uh, B-Rad system uh, by Wooftooth that you can bolt on to the, uh, the bolts here for the water bottle and it'll allow you to slide um, the, the mount, the water bottle cage, uh, upwards or downwards, uh, depending on what your need is. And there it is. Um, I have the water bottle cage, uh, mounted on the B-Rad system. It's slid, um, all the way up and there's enough clearance from the piggyback to the water bottle. Uh, and I'm also keeping a close eye here. Um, on this rocker link, I believe it's called, you know, when it does compress, it does seem to be enough clearance there to where it's not going to um, crush the water bottle. I've gone ahead and released all of the air from the shock um, and obviously compressed it all the way down just so that we could see how much clearance we have uh, from this rocker link to the cage or the water bottle. And it's about I don't know, half an inch, maybe, um, maybe a little bit more of clearance from the rocker um, to the water bottle. So there's no concern there. However, in looking at this rear triangle here, um, it does seem to come in contact um, with the cage. Um, I do have a somewhat, you know, thick uh, plastic cage here. So um, I would recommend if you're going to run a water bottle cage, um, run one that is slightly thinner or as thin as possible. I personally carry uh, my water bottle on me. Um, I'd rather have the weight on me than have the weight on the frame, but that's personal preference. But if you do want to run a water bottle, you can um, with this one particular option. I, I would encourage to use a side loading cage. Um, I don't see how you could, you know, run it um, if you had to slide it in from the top. So, or maybe I could even, um, and I lost the actual 
uh, mounting bolts for my water bottle here, being that I don't run with it anymore. Um, but I, I could see this mounting directly on here and not having to worry about the cage at all. Um, so yeah, so a caseless water bottle would definitely be a good option with the B-RAD system. A thinner water bottle cage, again, another good option. Um, or the Fidlock um, system water bottle uh, would be a third option. But yeah, really wanted to show you guys that um, so that you could kind of see what you're up against and what your options are. While we're down here, um, the second thing that I did notice um, is that at 25% sag, I did blow through the travel um, here in the rear uh, pretty easily. And um, yeah, I didn't get an opportunity to run any volume reducers, um, which is something that I wanted to try, but I didn't. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, that that would solve that while still maintaining that sag at 25 percent. Throw some volume reducers in there um, and then uh, that should solve that problem. And then lastly, um, the saddle. Um, so I did end up uh, this is the the actual stock saddle that it comes with the Fizika uh, um, saddle here, but it's it's pretty small um, in length as well as width, and it doesn't have, um, at least for me, all of the necessary padding that I need. So I ended up swapping this after the first ride uh, with my WTB Volt saddle. Which, by the way, thank you to Commenso USA for allowing me to um, take this bike out on a number of rides. Um, because I'm interested in buying it um, and in exchange for that, right, uh, I get to do this review. Um, if you are considering this bike and you have some questions um, that I may be able to answer, uh, leave a comment and uh, myself or someone else perhaps um, will chime in and uh, we'll help you out. If you've not subscribed, consider subscribing. Uh, there will be a third video coming. Uh, on something exciting, especially if you're local to Southern California, and I'll share it with uh, that with you in the uh, the coming week or weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, ride your own ride, and God bless.